Uh, you are all welcome, especially uh, the, the department ministry with your team, as well as my colleagues, honorable members and our staff. The purpose of this meeting is to get a briefing on project framework for implementation of recommendations emanating from 2022 budget vote 86 by the Department of Small Business. Without any waste of time, because we have got a lot of activities today, let me invite the DM to usher his, his team in this regard. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, our chairperson. And indeed, uh, I hear that uh, the team has a long day today and would want to wish the best of on the work that uh, the members are doing. Of course, I'm with the, the DG who will be leading on our presentation. Um, yeah, that's what I could say because I couldn't hear on apologies, but uh, as we would appreciate within the business of um, cabinets, the minister could be in that process. I would advancedly apologize for her. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Thank you, thank you, DM. Uh, if uh, King, DG, sorry, sorry, DG, just hang on. Bra King, can you take us to the the second item, which is apologies? Sorry for that. I jumped before. Do we have any apologies, King? Yes, Chairperson. Mm. Thank you. The apologies that we have received, it's the, the apology of uh, Honorable April, who is on leave, and Honorable Jacobs. And then we also have an apology of uh, the Honorable Zumula, who is currently in a flight. Then he's indicated that he will uh, join as soon as he lands. And then we've got an apology of Finkosi Ultuli. And we have also now received an apology of the minister who's attending the, the cabinet. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, King. Uh, let's note the apologies. Uh, the next item is adoption of the agenda. Can I have the mover amongst the members? Chairperson, I move for the adoption of the agenda. Thank you, Honorable Lubengo. Any seconder in this regard? Seconded, Chairperson. Thank you. And uh, DG, the stage is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. And uh, good day again. Um, I will request the right to project. Uh, I am accompanied by, uh, we are led by the DM, but we also have colleagues from the entities, they are here, and the members of the executive uh, of the department are also here. Uh, I don't see. I see this document now. I find DJ, I made you a cost. Yes, yes, I'm fine. I'm just looking for a document. I don't see it when I present, when I project. Uh, just quickly removing some of the documents here on my screen. Yes, I can see it now. No, thank you, Chair. I'll try and, and, and assist in terms of time so that I don't really waste 
uh, yeah, the members time so that they can go and prepare for other things. This is just the framework uh, of the presentation. We'll talk about um, what we are going to do, especially on all the matters that have been recommended uh, for the department to consider. Also, we do have chair uh, towards the end of the presentation, uh, some detailed project plans in terms of some of the projects uh, that we are working on as a department uh, of small business, business development uh, under ANEC. Uh, I'm not gonna talk to this, uh, it's just the introduction, uh, chair. Um, I'll go straight to the to the recommendations. The first uh, recommendation, Chair, um, it talks to uh, the work that we are doing. Uh, one matter that we thought we should also clarify is that the creative industries master plan that we had started was uh, eventually transferred to the Department of Sports, Arts and Culture. Uh, for, for them to finalize, we had done a lot of work around it, uh, but uh, we had to hand it over so that they can work on it and finalize. But we are still supporting them uh, because most of the people who are benefiting from this master plan are uh, small businesses as well as micro uh, entrepreneurs. So we will be working closely with them and we do provide technical support with them. Uh, when this master plan was presented uh, in the social cluster as well as the essay cluster. So now it is being prepared uh, for cabinet presentation uh, by the Minister of Sports, Arts and Culture. Uh, we the, the other observation is that of uh, the committee welcoming the appointment of uh, Mr. Sipongos, who are of the same view. In fact, they are working with us in the establishment of that uh, uh, unit. Uh, as we indicated to the portfolio committee, they were part of our meeting with the provinces on red tape reduction, uh, where they also made inputs, but also they were trying to learn in terms of the work that we're already doing so that they can see where they can add value. Uh, we welcome it also as a department, as you will assist us a lot in dealing with those issues that are beyond uh, our, our mandate. Chair, what we also thought we should uh, respond to as part of the observation uh, of the department of, of, of the portfolio committee, the issue of uh, the National Small Enterprise uh, Amendment Bill of 2020, just to indicate that comments were considered, they were incorporated into the bill. The business case was done and finalized for the establishment of the uh, Ombuds Office. The socioeconomic impact assessment uh, was done and finalized. The only thing that has been outstanding is the certificate from the Office of the Chief State Law Advisor, as well as the Office of the State Attorney, who also made some inputs in terms of how we can address the issue of Section 20, Subsection 2 of the current act because they were clear that the office of the chief state law advisor that they were not going to give us a certificate even though the section has nothing to do with the amendment that we are dealing with they just picked it up from their side and they thought it has to be addressed before it goes to cabinet we had a discussion with them last week a chair so that we can resolve this because we are uncompatible with further delaying the bill so they agreed that uh, it's fine they will work with us in amending it it doesn't have to go for consultations because it's also related to something or the matter of the court or a court judgment so it will assist us uh, to fast track it so we are uh, we have uh, shared uh, the, the the section uh, that we uh, the proposed amendment to section 20.2 with the Office of the Chief State Advisor so that they can advise whether it's proper and then they will issue a legal certificate to proceed uh, to cabinet. So we expect to have this done and, and finalized uh, within uh, quarter two uh, chair. So we are proceeding with the bill so that cabinet can endorse it and then submit uh, to, to parliament for further processing. Um, here, I think it's the, it's the same uh, explanation where we're just uh, going into further details of what we've done um, and also clarifying the issue of the uh, legal certificate uh, that we are waiting for from the Office of the Chief State Law Advisor. Chair, one matter here uh, that we thought we should also further clarify uh, that we are, um, we have consulted, in fact, with the Department of Public Services and Administration especially on the establishment of the Ombuds Office. The guidance that was provided by DPSA is that we need to establish this office. In the short term, it must be established as a juristic person 
within the department and then in the medium term as a public entity that is uh, falling under Schedule 3A. And then they have made some estimations in terms of the startup cost and that uh, for the office uh, within the department for the first four years, it is estimated that around 80 million would be required. We did have an engagement with the uh, National Treasury recently, I think it was on the 5th of May, where we were talking about the issue of the additional budget that would be required to assist us to establish the Ombuds office. From our side, the 460 million that was mentioned, uh, so the apologies for that, that you have uh, flu. As that um, the 460 million is not a part of the program or the budget that was uh, given uh, to the department. Uh, so we, we just want to correct that. But we are having discussions with National Treasury and we have presented this uh, to them that we, there is a shortfall in terms of the establishment of this office. Chair, in terms of um, this recommendation observation 6.6, uh, um, we want to further clarify here that uh, we have have quite a, a lot of uh, progress with the uh, Department of Public Service and Administration following the meeting where they came and presented to the portfolio committee. There was a discussion at the high level with the political principals and then followed by a meeting uh, with uh, the analysts from both departments on the 12th of May to resolve those challenges because we don't want this thing to go between us and DPSA uh, arguing about certain things, but we thought it's, a proper, it's proper for the officials to meet and finalize this. So some concerns were raised in terms of the costing of the structure. And then there was an engagement with National Treasury. These concerns were raised by the executive committee of the department uh, to confirm the costing implications because we had catered for certain costs, which were going to also limit the number of posts that we can have as a department. And then National Treasury has advised that they were issuing guidelines for costing and budgeting for compensation of employees which will be communicated by yesterday. And then we should align uh, the costing of the structure based on the assumptions provided in the guidelines. So there is quite um, a, a work that has been done uh, by the department together with Department of Public and Service Administration. So what we need to do, because the business case has also been finalized, we just need to package it. Once we get this costing from National Treasury, um, we finalize the structure and then submit to ministers for onward uh, submission to DPSA or Minister of Public Service and Administration for concurrence, and then we implement the structure. So we are very much uh, positive that it will happen in the next, within the next uh, two months. Then the other matter uh, that was uh, presented by uh, the portfolio committee as a concern is the issue of the Businesses Act. Uh, what uh, we also want to present uh, to the uh, portfolio committee is that we have already started with the process of reviewing uh, the Businesses Act, but also just to remind the, the members of the portfolio committee that there was a licensing of business bill that was presented by Department of Trade, Industry and Competition around March 2018. And uh, members will remember that there was a lot of noise around this uh, bill and TTIC decided to abandon the process. And so we also want to avoid those pitfalls because the people who were vehemently against it, uh, citing that it might add red tape rather than assisting and reducing red tape. So we are really consulting and ensuring that we are able to get consensus because we don't really want to face the same opposition that was faced by DTIC back in 2013. But also the issue of the taking of this because this is a concurrent mandate. In, 20, in 1993, uh, the, through the interim constitution, the, the businesses or the licensing and the permits uh, administration was transferred to provinces and they are running with it. And we are ensuring that whatever we do, uh, because this now is a concurrent mandate, that's why all provinces are able to come up with their own bills when it comes to this matter. It's because it's a concurrent mandate, so they are allowed to do that. So we are consulting with them so that we don't really treat on each other's toes when it comes to this matter. We deal with issues that can be handled um, or should be handled by a national department in addressing all matters pertaining to licensing as well as the permit issues. We also uh, chair determined to make sure that we at least by the end of this financial year, this business bill should have been um, uh, approved by cabinet and introduced to, to, to parliament. So we are pushing, even though we have those timelines in the APP, we are trying to 
cut down and make sure that we push, but not also compromising in terms of consultations, because this is a very, there are a lot of people who have vested interest around this bill. We have provinces, we also have municipalities who are also generating some sort of income through these fees that they charge. So it is important for us to really get the consensus. So everyone might not agree, but at least we should have engaged uh, on the on the position that we must take uh, going forward for the sake of small businesses and informal businesses. Um, Chair, just to further um, clarify, I think it's, it's the matter that I've just covered now that different provinces, it has been observed by the portfolio committee that different provinces have come up with um, uh, various uh, interventions in this space. We know that observation, but just to indicate that this work already we're focusing on township and rural enterprises was already part of the white paper on national strategy for the development and promotion of small businesses in South Africa. So it, 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 it is based, uh, the work that we are doing is based on a particular um, a, a policy. We do have uh, the, the, the CEDA, which is also part of, of, of um, our, our, our portfolio. Uh, they are also uh, executing this work. They do have a specific mandate in terms of ensuring that they do support uh, businesses uh, that are, are growing. Also, Chair, just to clarify that it is part of the work that we are doing in the master plan. So there is a special section there that deals with matters around township and economic development. The master plan um, is out uh, for, has been gazetted on the 10th of May, and we have given 30 days uh, for people to provide input. So it's part of the work that is being done. There. So there is no really a vacuum in the space uh, because there is a policy uh, that is existing, and then we also put it on the master plan uh, to make sure that it is covered. Just to clarify all further that the local municipal policy and bylaws on business license and permits are guided by the Businesses Act, which is the act that we are reviewing. There are provisions uh, in the local policy and bylaws should be in line with the national legislation. That's why we are engaging with the provinces intensely, so that whatever we do, um, uh, we also align uh, their work uh, with the work that we are doing at national level as we are supposed to be uh, as a national department. Uh, Chair, I think one of the matters that we are working on is the issue of supporting uh, especially cooperatives. Um, because of the limited balance sheet, I'm sure members will remember that we have transferred all work that is related to financial support um, to the department to the small enterprise finance agency and they've introduced blended finance so it's not 100 percent loans that are offered to the cooperatives but we offer blended finance we do agree that there is high mortality rate especially around cooperatives so there is a need for us to really uh, introduce um, intensive support and CEDA is is working they do have a dedicated program that support uh, the work of cooperatives i must indicate that um the, the 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 minister and deputy minister we had a discussion recently and they've asked that we come up with a pro, pro program and uh, to support cooperatives and that might call for us to review all the relevant uh, documents uh, including the policies the legislation related to cooperatives so that we properly really support uh, cooperatives and move uh, them from just being those survival enterprises but to become uh, enterprise that transform the economy. So it's critical for us to also provide this post-investment support and CIFA does actively support these enterprises that have received funding to ensure that the risk of impairment is minimized and where restructuring is required, it is introduced without delay. Um, I did speak on the issue of CEDA uh, prioritizing and this work is really part of uh, the corporate plan that was pre presented by CEDA uh, on, 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 on cooperatives uh, support. Chair, the issue of the SME and cooperatives funding policy. Um, we know the concern of, of, of the portfolio committee. And we are we had uh, extensive consultations. You'll see that in terms of the people that we invited for these consultations, included you know, business chambers, informal traders, uh, commercial banks, cooperatives, because we really wanted to get direct inputs from the people who experience these day-to-day -day, uh, challenges. So the, the policy is being finalized now and will be taken uh, to cabinet for gazetting again for public comments because we always want to make sure that we cover as many people as possible in terms of these policies because they are not just government policies, but we expect 
the whole of the whole country to also uh, implement the same policy. So this work is being consulted widely, but also the cabinet will approve it for for, for gazetting so that uh, it comes back, it goes for public comments, and then it comes back to them for final approval. Chair, I think the concern that was raised by the portfolio committee, especially on CEDAR's budget, um, we also have the same concern. Just to indicate or emphasize one point that CEDAR in the past has been able to have a surplus budget that will normally go to national treasury and request that uh, they give us that money back so that CEDAR can continue to execute certain projects. But this year, 2021, 22, there was no there's no surplus. All the money that was allocated was fully utilized. So it means this time around, CEDA will be re really operating under tight budget uh, because of uh, all the money uh, that uh, was budgeted for this year. So there's no chance for us getting a surplus. But we are addressing these matters uh, with CEDA uh, so to make sure that we're still able to fulfill um, uh, all the, the work that we had promised to deliver as, as, as a portfolio. Chair, on the issue of the constituency offices, we said we'll take this matter because there is an interdepartmental committee on DDM that is chaired by COGTA because we really don't want to go on our own uh, tangent as a department, but we need to work closely uh, with the structures that are there so that we also check uh, the legalities and every other thing so that we are not really accused as a department of utilizing um, uh, our work uh, to further certain a political objective. So we are taking this work seriously. We're presenting it to this interdepartmental committee for guidance because DDM is already there to ensure that we expand and CEDA has committed uh, as per the corporate plan for this year to expand to add eight more offices to make sure that we reach more people and uh, the services that we offer as a portfolio are available closer to the people. One other matter, Chair, um, I think we are working on the issue of uh, addressing uh, the vacancies. Uh, just to indicate, Chair, that for, for the incorporation to be finalized, it won't uh, need an amendment to the current act that we, the National Small Enterprise Amendment Bill that we are working on, but we are looking at coming up with a special legislation. Um, I always indicate that it's similar to what the National Enterprise National uh, Empowerment Act, uh, which empowers uh, the NEF uh, to execute its duties. We are looking at doing something similar to that because we'll also need to repeal a number of sections in different acts uh, because we are getting the CBDA, Cooperatives Bank Development Agency, over. We'll have to repeal certain section of that act. We'll also need to repeal certain section of the Cooperatives Amendment Act and also certain section of this bill. So we, we are working on a specific legislation because that's the guidance we got, especially from National Federal, that we need to have a specific legislation to allow this uh, entity to have some sort of flexibility to be able to stand alone, to be able to execute its mandate without you know, a hindrance. So there is work that um, uh, is being done. It's part of the, uh, the project plan. I'll show it uh, in the annex that uh, we've prepared, especially on the project plan that will uh, deliver the, the incorporation of the three entities. We are working on the issue of uh, reducing vacancies in the department. We do have a project plan, but we know that once the structure is approved, there will be an increase in terms of the vacancy rate, but we also intend to make sure that we are prepared for that. That's why we kept the target that we need to have less than 10% uh, vacancy rate by the end of the financial year. Um, I think we, we, we also want to emphasize here, Chair, that uh, we are committed as a department or even as a portfolio to make sure that there is no uh, a disturbance so we don't compromise uh, service delivery during this process uh, of the incorporation of the three entities. Just to indicate further that even the MTSF as well as our APP, they have not been amended to reduce the target to cater for none. Uh, a delivery of the services. So we are clear that yeah, instead of reducing the target, we increase them so that uh, SMMEs and entrepreneurs out there are not compromised when we are still busy uh, internally dealing with this uh, incorporation of the entities. So uh, we just want to make that commitment that we'll never compromise service delivery just uh, for us to be able to deliver on the uh, incorporation of the three entities. 
Um, we, I think I've spoken to uh, observation 7.4 uh, in terms of the structure uh, that we are really pushing hard and, and ensuring that we are also able to finalize because even the DDG positions cannot be filled currently because uh, the structure that uh, is, is being discussed between the department and as well as Department of Public Service and Administration. So once the structure is approved, uh, everything will, will, will start uh, unfolding. Um, with the issue of uh, the, the finalization of the NISET master plan, um, as I indicated earlier, we are almost there. Um, we will be uh, taking it quickly to to, to NetLEC because that was one of the recommendations uh, by cabinet that it must go to NetLEC so that all social partners there can also uh, have a say and also buy into this master plan uh, of the department. So we'll be taking it there and then after that we'll present it to cabinet. Uh, for approval, and we believe that during the second quarter, which ends uh, in uh, September, we should be able to finalize uh, this get cabinet approval. Um, this this matter was um, uh, also raised by the uh, portfolio committee. Uh, we, as I indicated earlier on the co-ops, we are really moving at uh, upscaling the support that we provide to cooperatives. Um, I must indicate. Though, Chair, that CIFA has um, uh, supported cooperatives, and unfortunately, uh, the faltering rate uh, is quite high when it comes to cooperatives. Uh, I will show you on the on the slide because we have been requested to provide a list of cooperatives supported by 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 CIFA. It, we do have that list uh, as part of this presentation. We're saying that uh, there's quite a number of engagements that we want to lead, and the Deputy Minister is the leader in terms of the. Uh, delegations, especially when it comes to these cooperatives, we are admit that there's high failure rate. That's why we are engaging uh, with the cooperative sector so that we address all matters concerning cooperatives and make sure that these uh, kind of enterprises are able to deliver uh, a, a social, social economic uh, transformation for all uh, in the country because the co-ops are the biggest uh, tools really in assisting us to get as many people uh, involved with the mainstream economy as soon as possible. Chair, we thought we should provide further feedback uh, on the forensic investigation that was uh, concluded some time back. Uh, just to remind uh, the, the members of the committee that uh, it was done following the regulator, regulatory audit of 2016-17 by Auditor General of South Africa. We then requested, because they do have an investigation arm there uh, at AG, we did not really want to go out and get other people to assist us with this work. Um, so we got AG, uh, they assisted us, they did a good work. We had nine employees that were, were suspended for alleged fraud at the time. Four of the nine were cleared of the allegations, of which two were cleared before even the hearing could, could take place, uh, while the other two were cleared in, at the conclusion of the hearing. We finalized all disciplinary processes, uh, of which we dismissed uh, five of the nine employees uh, uh, in May uh, 2021. And then since the investigation chair was done by the Auditor General, they are obliged to present the report to the National Assembly in terms of Section 10 of the Public Act uh, number 25 of 2004. They did present uh, to the Portfolio Committee on the 4th of November 2020, but they have not tabled the final report, which they are still working on because they were indicating to us that they want to allow the process of uh, the internal disciplinary process to be finalized, but also they were editing certain parts uh, so that not everything uh, that was uh, uh, discovered uh, was, was could be uh, presented as part of the work that uh, should be presented to the National Assembly. So they are working on, on, on the report. Chair uh, AXA will present uh, in the way they want to present it uh, to the to the National Assembly. But uh, we're just indicating, Chair, that we did execute this work, we did uh, follow up, we did uh, take action as a department to address uh, matters that were raised uh, by, by, by the uh, Auditor General, but as well as the Portfolio Committee. Chair, this is just a list of the cooperatives that have been supported by CIFA. Um, all of them, uh, we supported them uh, to the value of uh, 5.2 million, uh, from the 1st of April to 31 March. And that, as I indicated earlier, um, the, 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 the risk um, uh, for, for CIFA here is 100% that they might not be able to pay back the whole 5.2 million uh, because of the challenges that are really faced by uh, uh, cooperatives. The chair, just to um, indicate further here, 
uh, that uh, we we note the support and uh, by the portfolio committee that uh, they do support the, 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 the township and rural entrepreneurship program and then emphasizing on the fact that there should be an, an overarching framework for adaptation by all other provinces we just want to further indicate that indeed uh, we know we know that uh, just to indicate that there is also work that is even done by national treasury under their national uh, cities support program and there are other numerous other initiatives by various stakeholders just to also emphasize that the point I made earlier that provinces are empowered by the constitution to develop their own provincial legislation in matters that are a functional area of concurrent national and provincial legislative competence. Trade is one of those that are defined in terms of schedule four of the constitution uh, of a concurrent uh, a mandate. So they, 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 that's why they are empowered uh, to go ahead and develop those uh, 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 bills as well as the policies. But uh, from our side as a department, we are working on amending this so that there is also uniformity across provinces. We still have to play our role as a leader uh, in the space as a department of small business development. That's why we are working on the Businesses Act to amend uh, various uh, sections, but also repeal a certain section so that there is uniformity across you cannot go to different areas and find uh, different policies um, and different requirements by different um, municipalities also different provinces so as a department we are occupying our space by proceeding ahead we've been also encountering some resistance from some provinces citing this issue of the transfer of the Businesses Act uh, in terms of the interim constitution of 1993, uh, saying we don't have a role to play, but we are saying to them, no, we do have a role to play. We are a national department. We have to ensure that uh, anything that has um, that has to be handled in terms of uh, the national uh, mandate, we play that role as a department. So we expect quite a lot of resistance, even from provinces as well as municipalities, but we are determined to make sure that we deliver on this. So far, we've also engaged with the Office of the Chief Territorial Advisor because we wanted to make sure that whatever we start, it's something we don't want to encounter challenges towards the end of the process. So they've given us two legal opinions. We are responding to some of the issues that they've raised, and also we are taking their guidance uh, in terms of ensuring that whatever we do, uh, we'll have a policy that will be acceptable. Um, I think the issue we've addressed this one uh, in the in the uh, recommendation 6.7. And then there is uh, this issue of um, the parliamentary constituency offices. Uh, I think I did address it earlier that we want to really ensure that uh, whatever we do, uh, we are not found wanting at the end of the day so that we are clear that the mandate, because if we need, for example, to provide financial support uh, to these offices, we might be found wanting. Um, so we are really pushing it and making sure that it's discussed. At an at interdepartmental uh, committee that is responsible for DDM, and also for uh, for them to provide guidance in terms of how we can work closely or cooperate with these parliamentary constituency offices without compromising uh, the department. Then, chair, just to emphasize here, uh, the minister and deputy minister really have been active in ensuring that we engage with as many. Uh, structures as possible because we are always, always aware that we are not the only ones who can deliver on this mandate. We do need the support of the private sector, we need support of the community, we need support of unions. So this, this work is ongoing, but we're also participating in the social uh, impact committee that was established by the president following the State of the Nation address, where we are raising the issues that are related to small businesses, whatever social compact we enter into as government. The issues around small business development are not left out. So we are pushing those things. We are pushing mostly the issue of SMME support so that all partners can support SMEs, but also looking at the issues around red tape. Those are the matters that we are pushing strongly because red tape is not only a, a government issue. There's quite a lot of red tape out there, uh, even from the private sector side. So we are pushing and working together with them. So with the social compact that will be announced by uh, the president will include the work that we are doing as a department of small business development. Chair, we are just recommending that the portfolio committee takes note of the feedback uh, from the portfolio. We do have colleagues on this platform who will also respond uh, to some of the issues that might be raised. We thought, Chair, we should also just bring this to your attention. This is the project plan uh, for the uh, finalization of the establishment uh, of uh, the incorporated entity. 
just for the committee where we really need uh, the, 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 your strongest support is during that time, milestone six, the issue of legislation, uh, because normal legislation takes too long. Sometimes it takes 18 months, but we believe that it's possible for this one to be done at a shorter period so that we do meet uh, the, the deadline given to us by the by cabinet, which is 31 December 2022. Just to indicate that so far, um, in terms of milestones, uh, the, the the business case, for example, that is put there across up until uh, September 2022, a lot of work has been done. Uh, we do have a draft business case of which uh, we're doing final consultations on so that because it will inform every other thing that will be done. Uh, so there is progress uh, that we have registered already. There will be a number of projects that will be running parallel. But uh, this is the our final program plan that we put in place. The deadline of the 31st of December is there, and cabinet has also requested us to just keep them uh, abreast. So on a six month basis, we'll be going to cabinet just to report to them in terms of how far we are uh, with the work uh, that we've been given uh, by cabinet to execute. This is just also a, a, a breakdown in terms of the activities on the SMEs and cooperatives funding policy. Uh, we've done the consultations. Uh, we'll also have uh, focus groups um, on, on between July and September, submission to SA cluster and then submission to cabinet uh, for final round of public consultation. As I indicated earlier, uh, uh, the mandate is too big, especially when it comes to supporting small businesses. That's why we still want to gazette it for final round of public consultation because the funding gap is too huge. Uh, there is a need for like 346 billion and we don't have that money as government to support small businesses. So we need the buy-in of all stakeholders and then the finalization of the policy uh, by, by the last quarter. So Chair, these are just a quick uh, update Chair, in terms of what we put as project plan to enable us to deliver on the targets that we, we, we have put ourselves. Some of the areas Chair, we did not want to come to the committee and present timeframes when we are still um, dependent on other government so that we don't want to be accused of misleading the committee coming here and saying, we'll do this by this. But those things that are dependent 100% on us, we are confident uh, to put them here and say, uh, portfolio committee, this is what we are going to do by this date because it's things that we have 100% control over. Chair, with those words, uh, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, thank you, DG. That was mouthful. Honorable members, here we are. We requested them to come up uh, with a plan or maybe program of action on our recommendations on the issue of the, the APP. Um, you have taken my, my point when you said uh, you you are skeptical to indicate deadlines in relation with um, other departments' uh, responsibilities, but uh, activities which belongs to this department we have highlighted September 2022, December 2022. Um, I'm now giving an opportunity to you, honorable members, to engage on the presentation by the department in the name of the DG. Uh, King, you will identify hands for me. First hand. Quiet chairperson. Mm -hmm. oh, it's a uh, honorable lieutenant. Okay. And mm -hmm. honor mm -hmm. uh, sorry, honorable lieutenant. Mm -hmm. uh, honorable Mieni. Yes. And honorable uh, April. Mm -hmm. Those are the ends so far. Okay. Over to you, Honorable Mpenjan. Well, uh, thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. And uh, good morning to the colleagues and the department as well. <clears throat> uh, 
you will forgive me, Chairperson. I had a flu in the two couple of days there, so I, I I'm not sure if my voice is is proper. I didn't have a voice for the past two days. Chairperson, <laughs> uh, we thank for the uh, uh, presentation. It sounds convincing. Uh, it shows that indeed uh, the department can listen to us as a portfolio committee when we advise them or when we check with them if there are any space where we can help. Because as a committee, we are not necessarily here to lash them. We are also here to help uh, how they must um, do their work because uh, we get first-hand complaints from the people as we do our constituencies. Uh, of course, Chairperson, we are not necessarily here to praise the fish for swimming, but uh, the presentation was very good. Uh, the only thing we know that the presentation can be good, but the implementation do the opposite. So we're here to also commend again and encourage this department to carry on and go and do exactly as we recommended and as they understood it as well, because somewhere, somehow they also say they agree with us. When we say this is not right, that is not right. So we we are here to work together, Chairperson, going forward. That is why sometimes, uh, Chairperson, when we step on each other's toes, it's not necessarily personal. Sometimes we will ask uh, very much discomfortable questions because we want to make the comfortable discomfortable because this is our work to take responsibility as the public out there when they voted for us to come and represent them, they must see us doing the work. So we thank them a lot uh, for this pre uh, presentation, HRPSN. It sounds good. It is exactly what we recommended, especially on the issue of township and the rural uh, areas. They must also zoom in there very strongly so, because that is mostly where the problem is. These issues of malls in our villages, they have taken all the, 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 the luxury of our people. Our people used to have shops there in the townships and the villages as we grew up, as you might also know, but now there are uh, 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 malls all over the, the villages. So those malls, they don't own by our people, neither the companies, they don't even give them work for that matter. If they do, they, they pay them very little money. So our people must must work for themselves instead of believing in these issues of malls, which they don't they don't even benefit them. So zoom in their department as a department back to, to the villages, back to the townships. Let's see what how can we help the township again to revive our people to survive again in the township. Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. Thanks, Honorable. Honorable uh, Thanks, Chairperson and honorable members. Uh, I think, let me thank the presentation and raise that I got only one concern. Where I am from, Chair, I'm from the very deep rural areas where also the DTM is non-functional and CETA and CIFA is not even in my, my, my district. Uh, that is my concern. I, I, I don't know how are we going to deal with that because most of this uh, thing will be done by the DTM, which in our area, hey, they are not visible. And that is the only problem which I have. We do have the constituent offices, which is not working. Uh, the relationship between the constituent offices and the DTM is not that much good. Uh, I don't know how are we going to address that uh, because CIFA and CETA are also not visible. That is the question which I want to pose. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Miene. Honorable April. Chairperson, thank you very much for the opportunity. I would like to take this opportunity to also greet fellow uh, MPs and the department. 
DG, we would like to welcome your presentation. It was very precise. It was indicative. It was loaded with recommendations. And one would be very delighted to hear that even uh, that everybody in the in the PC agrees that uh, this is very progressive on your part. One would hope that in, when it comes to, to, to the House and we have to vote on things like this, that people don't forget that in the PC, we have agreed on certain of these things and then want to take a different posture for posturing purposes. So mine was just to welcome this, um, the recommendations made. I also want to emphasize the point that, uh, that uh, Honorable uh, Horst is doing, uh, as he's saying, is very true. You know, if it is difficult for a member of parliament to get uh, the department to respond to the constituencies, how much more difficult is it not for our people to directly contact um, the department and get assistance? That is one of the things that must be taken serious, DG. Uh, it has been a very cumbersome and a slumbersome pro uh, process to see delivery in our rural areas and specific entities is some of the things that one would want the department to note that it doesn't matter how grand our plans are. If we fail to implement and if we fail to have a working kind of relationship, it would be nothing but great numbers on a great piece of paper written for a great purpose, uh, but not uh, affecting the lives of our people. And that is what I wanted to submit this morning to the, to the PC. Thank you so much for the presentation. It is welcome to be. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable April. Do we have any other hands, King? Yes, Chairperson, Honorable uh, Hendricks. Okay. Honorable Hendricks, the stage is yours. Thank you very much, uh, 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 Honorable Chair. Honorable Chair, uh, I support the Honorable Members who are waving the flag for the rural areas. We were in, in Crowdville last week. Crowdville has got a river. I think it's the Umbuti River, and along that river, they grow peanuts. So we had a workshop uh, with the residents, nearly 100. We got a nice tent and refreshments and so on, and we had a tutor. And that tutor is going to teach them how to make peanut butter. So she told them, you know, we've got all the peanuts in the world in Gradville. You know, Gradville is where Chief Albert Latuli uh, was banished to and he, where he was thrown under a train. So that is our legacy project for Chief Albert Latuli, making peanut butter. And I hope that we will get the support of honorable members of Shida and Shiva and, and the minister uh, because they want to even export halal peanut butter uh, to the rest of the world. And what was very interesting is that a lot of young children, learners, uh, grade uh, seven and nine attended. So they are seeing a career opportunity for them. There's nothing for them in Crowdville. And here they see, but we have peanuts. We can make peanut butter. And the whole world is peanut butter. But having said that, the same thing in Mapami village, where uh, your department uh, chair has granted them a fishing village and they don't only catch fish uh, from the shoreline, but they can go in deeper. And even President Ramaphosa is very interested to go on the trip once the fishing vessel has been commissioned. And I hope, Chair, that you will inquire where now we can get that fishing vessel and whether they will throw in a refrigerator. You can't catch the fish and then you have no place to, to store it. Lastly, Honorable Chair, the Western Cape has for 100 years, the hub of the economic activity has been making dresses. The women here, and even some of the men, make the best dresses. And today, some of our uh, 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 young women uh, who've done courses at Technicons universities have their own dress lines. However, we find that uh, uh, many of the people on the Cape Flats, if you visit every third house on the Cape Flats, they are showing, they are making dresses, they are making clothes for the schools. But material is a problem. You can't get material because of the of China. And uh, so uh, we, we feel that uh, we should look at the project 
uh, for the Cape Flash and the revive the garment making industry. Now the Minister of Agriculture has been very creative. I don't know why our minister is not creative. Why doesn't she make available for these people material grants? Like the Minister of Agriculture, she makes available seedlings and fertilizers. And uh, uh, because that's difficult to acquire, and you find that the ag agricultural sector is going to flourish. We want the uh, clothing sector in the Western Cape on the Cape Flats to flourish in Ayanga, Langa, in Point Evil, Mitchell's Plain. Every third house, I challenge the whoop to go and visit any street and you will find that there are people making dresses. Why are, aren't we playing in that space? Why aren't we helping there? Thank you very much, Honorable Chair. Thank you, Honorable Hendricks. I think that taking notes, the DM is also here in our midst. Um, I'm happy because uh, members, you are proactive. Our constituents must be vibrant. I think we are the ones who must uh, invite those ministers as the members of the portfolio committee to assist our people. I'm happy because I had the DG indicating that on issues of cooperatives, uh, funds are leaking. So they will have to make some means that they get more funds for these cooperatives. Cooperatives, uh, co our cooperatives are suffering. I think if we can uh, hold hands together with the department in our PCOs and make sure that things are happening. It will really assist us. Do we still have any other hand? Chairperson, there is a hand of uh, Honorable Tenjan. I don't know whether it's a leak his hand or he wants to take a second bite. Honorable Tenjan, is it the leak has a hand or you are coming back again? No, no, uh, thank you very much, Chairperson. Uh, I'm not coming back, uh, Chairperson. I thought I wanted to make some clarity here because mm -hmm. I might have been misquoted when I, I, mm -hmm. I said the report was proper. When I said the report was proper, Chairperson, I didn't mean that uh, I, I'm, I agree with the budget or anything. So, mm -hmm. because I had a, a honorable member there, I think he misunderstood me when I said the report was proper. When I said the report is proper, Chairperson, I mean, they took what you advised them. Yeah. In other words, if they are going to implement it, then we can approve the budget. Because the a, a, a report and doing something, it's a two different thing. Now we're talking in a step where they still, they understood what we advised them to go and do to our people. Then when they go and do, and then we see they are doing, there's no point, of course, of rejecting the budget because it's going to help the, the very same people. But I'm not approving any budget yet. I was saying the report, is proper. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Thank you. Um, another thing, uh, DM and DG, uh, which was leaking because we are supposed to monitor while doing oversight. It was the issue of timelines, but in other areas, I had the DG indicating that this is going to happen during this. And I discovered that since as the department in other instances, you rely on other departments as well as a, a lawyers of the, the, the department. So maybe that was the case that you could not uh, bring in those uh, timelines, but as long as you may indicate to us, like the one we are saying by September, we'll be doing this, and on this one, on the milestone, uh, you are saying that uh, by 31st of December 2022, we'll have done one, two, three. I think that's what the members are looking for. Because while uh, doing that oversight, is going to be along those lines. Any other hand? <clears throat> Chairperson. Yes. It is not a hand, but it's it's a message from uh, Honorable Matulela indicating mm. that he's got a network problem. So he shares written in the chat there okay. saying in Limpompo in Vembe, there are seven small businesses who have been knocking 
for 10 years now in Sida without any help. Amongst them, there are three doing pigari in the okay. eastern and then eastern Cape. Uh, it's the same story. So we plead that be the department to implement and quickly reach SMMEs in rural and townships, uh, please. Presentation will be given round of applause after implementation in the ground. I thank you. Thank you, Honorable Matulelo. Your message will be taken to the department. Uh, no, any other hand, according to you? No, Chair. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> let me join my colleagues by saying that is a the 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 responses is in line with what we have recommended, and indeed we'll be happy if the implementation part of it can occur, and also to speed up the process. Maybe if it is possible, DM will have to make sure that we call those other department where the department cannot jump alone so that we engage with them to speed up the process because the issue of unemployment is high and it's only small businesses which we believe that if they are given support they can be able to make the difference the issue of um, malls in our township I happen to support um, Honorable Ntenjanum. It's not only the malls. <clears throat> uh, those who are plowing, farmers, you find out that they are stranded. They, those malls can't even take their products. I think we'll have to, to make sure that the visibility of the Department of CEDA on the ground is also helping them to cancel their products. It's painful for a farmer to plow and then during cultivation, you don't know where to take your cabbages to. So as the portfolio committee, we'll also have to assist the department by making sure that we liaise with other departments. Uh, as Honorable Hendricks has indicated that uh, the Minister of um, Agriculture is visible. So the visibility should be a joint hand with us who must associate those departments which are too close to, to cooperatives as well as SMEs to can make sure that uh, that joint meetings is happening and we come up with some recommendations, joint efforts to work on the ground. That will also assist not to leave it for for the small business alone. Uh, I will now invite the DG to respond. Uh, then the DM will wrap up. Over to you, DG. Thank you, Chair, and thank you, uh, honorable members, for those questions, uh, comments, and inputs. Let me, with your permission, Chair, request the CEO Sita to start first, and then I will. Uh, uh, take those questions that he's not going to respond to. Uh, CO. Yes. CO, Sida. Thanks, DJ. Um, good morning, Chair and Honorable Members. Um, just uh, on two things that I uh, will just touch base on. <clears throat> My voice is not good this morning. I think it's the cold. Um, mm -hmm. the, the one matter is the issue around accessibility. As part of the APP that we submitted to, uh, this year, we had said that we'll be doing access points, access service points, which will bring us um, closer to um, the SMMEs and cooperatives in the rural areas um, as part of the of the aid that we're planning to uh, roll out this year, where we do accreditations of uh, uh, local accountants to be part of our extension service so that um, the SMMEs and cooperatives in that area can go to that uh, place and be able to get assisted with uh, CEDA having to pay for these services. We believe that uh, that was um, that is the best plan we can have without having to increase um, the number of offices because that becomes expensive. So 
So that was that's what we submitted to uh, the uh, as part of APP. So I I can say that for for sure that the areas like Nongoma, Pongola, the Zululand uh, district, um, I know that we didn't have CIFA and CIDA, um, or CIDA and CIFA didn't have um, a presence there, and I know that they're on the list for this year uh, as well, so that then at least we are closer uh, to people in the rural areas. That is among others that are on the list uh, to, uh, to be, uh, to, at least to make sure that we are closer to SMEs and cooperatives this year. So that um, should be uh, sorted as a part of our plans to be more visible and there's other rural and rural towns that uh, we, we, we are marked. Um, I think uh, the issue of the, the the access to markets is very key um, uh, to make sure that then SMEs have access to markets and that's our role. And definitely we have to get involved more and um, work together. We started the relationship and it's working well with the Department of Agriculture. Um, and uh, so we just need to make sure that that is solidified and we're able then to make sure that even the farmers are, are the first access to market is considered uh, assisted. Obviously, the process starts from the hand holding, from the plowing side uh, part, making sure that the quality product is produced so that then we don't have issues when it comes to access uh, to market. Um, and okay, on the issues of um, the, the the clients in Vembe and the uh, the Eastern Cape, who we'll, would we'll the DG, who we'll just get more information and make sure that they are assisted. Thanks, Chair. Thanks, DG. Thank you, DG. No, thanks, uh, CEO Chair. Uh, I think the CEO has covered the the the, the matters that were raised by Honorable Mieni uh, on 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 the accessibility uh, that we are working hard to improve this. Um, Madam Tenjana, I think uh, you're correct. Uh, we, that's why we're pushing for these access points uh, to cover rural and township areas in particular, so that our services can also be uh, closer to, to, to the people who need these services. In addition to the access points, we're also working with these um, TVET colleges that we are working with, uh, but also um, we're working on the, on the issue of uh, getting uh, the municipalities also some officials be trained there so that they they, they do offer or uh, uh, they can refer uh, some uh, entrepreneurs to to the relevant uh, entity if they need support i think one of the is also correct that we need to assist um uh, in dealing with the issues that they raised as the one of members of the portfolio committee which does really make sense that you cannot be a member representing small business, but you cannot get assistance from the same department. Uh, I think we will improve on that uh, so that we address also the issues that are raised by the public, but also those that are raised by uh, 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 the honorable members. And then honorable Hendrix, uh, you did touch on, on the work that um, you, you, you visited Crowdfield. Um, I think uh, we can maybe uh, request our CIDA office, but if you can, uh, those details uh, can, can be shared of that uh, program uh, of growing peanuts, if they can be referred to, to us so that we can ask the, the CIDA, HLV, CIDA uh, KZN uh, to follow up on that project and make sure that the support that they will need uh, is also provided. We do note also the recommendation around government uh, making. Uh, we do have um, a scheme that we're offering through CIFA on clothing and textile, especially for the informal as well as micro businesses. I think it's something that we need to, to consider and see uh, how we can further uh, support these uh, uh, small uh, businesses that are involved uh, in the clothing and textile sector, which is key, but also linking them up with the DTIC uh, interventions. I think we're, the, 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 the CEO has responded uh, because we're going to request those details uh, from Honor Matulela of those uh, SMEs in, 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 in Vembe. Uh, just to indicate, Chair, that uh, is Vembe and Eastern Cape, uh, sorry, um, so that we can follow up and, 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 and provide support uh, to those uh, small businesses that require support. I think, Chair, the, the point that you are raising, um, I think we will be. Um, 
in our quarterly reports, I think these issues, we can just add an annex where we'll just zoom in on the issues that the recommendations of the BRRR just to indicate the progress, even those matters that are not under the control of the department 100%, we can just show a progress uh, on a quarterly basis on how we are delivering as per our, our, our commitment to the portfolio committee. So that's the commitment uh, we, we are making, Chair. Uh, I do have colleagues who deal with the quarterly reports here, so we'll be able to provide uh, that information on a quarterly basis to the portfolio committee. Uh, Chair, I think I should end there. I don't know whether there's anything that I missed out uh, before I hand over to the chairperson. Uh, thank you, DG. I think you have covered us, and also to commend you on the issue of the forensic investigation where people have been punished. I think this is a lesson. Continue doing so uh, because we must respect a taxpayer's money and we must assist the vulnerable. Uh, the department has got very, very uh, a little budget, so we can't allow uh, people to misuse it. Meanwhile, we are evenly struggling to have a, a big budget to be able to reach our target or cover all the areas. We appreciate, uh, since we are going to have a, a meeting uh, with all CEDAS, uh, we are still preparing as well, we'll have to join hands together with you on how best can we assist because we can't see what's visible. Meanwhile, in other areas, we are not there, more especially on the issue of the DDM raised by Honorable Mayene. I think it's something which we'll have to check with the office of the president because in all district, in all district municipalities, the DDM has been launched and it makes our life easier in other areas. So these are issues which we'll have to, to check. Also, DM, I'm mandating you to look on this matter since um, a deputy ministers has been tasked with these responsibilities. Uh, I will now request the DM to, to wrap up the discussion, we appreciate the commitments which is being made by the department. DM, over to you. Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson, and indeed, uh, thank you for the comment and the comments that you have made. Uh, and I think uh, we're taking notes quite well. Uh, we'll take the process forward. But I must also indeed uh, thank all the members of the portfolio committee for their encourages contribution to the uh, presentation that we made. And I must again in front of the members of the portfolio committee, thank our DG for uh, having presented this report so clearly and in an attempt to answer the points that have been raised before. Uh, I really must say uh, we are indeed properly guided and when there are mistakes as you would do at other times we appreciate those being pointed out so that we correct them. Indeed uh, Chairperson thank you for allowing us this opportunity to make the presentation. Uh, we are working, we are going to work, and indeed would want to be capacitated to reach all the areas, money or no money, but our message should be listened to and uh, there should be implementation on the work that uh, has supposed to be done. I thank you, Chairperson, and uh, wish all the members of the portfolio committee the best ahead that there is a lot of work today and I know you are doing work and uh, yeah, we really appreciate that. Chairperson, thanks very much. Thank you, Deputy Minister. Um, King, can you go back to our agenda? Can't still remember what is in the agenda? Be the 
consideration, consideration. of min minutes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, can you flag can you flag the minutes so that we consider them? Move up. Honorable members who received those minutes, I would like us to correct where we feel there must be corrections. Next page. No corrections, move. No correction, move. No corrections, move. Thank you. Can I have a mover for the adoption of the minutes as the true reflection of what re transpired during the 25th of May, 2022? Chairperson, Honorable April, I move for the adoption of the, of the minutes. Thank you, Honorable April. Any second, Honorable members? Honorable uh, Mieni, two seconds. Thank you, Honorable Mieni. The minutes are duly adopted. Uh, honorable members, thank you so much uh, for your participation. Chair? Yes. Uh, before you close, I just uh, wanted to make the, the, the announcement of that invitation. OK, OK, OK. Do so. Do so, Papa. Honorable members, uh, the permission of the chairperson, uh, she's aware of this. We have, we have received this invitation from the Portfolio Committee uh, of Fire Education, which uh, we invited the committee to be to be in a joint meeting on the third uh, of February, of uh, June which is Friday, so, so I don't know what's happening. I'm trying to take it down. So uh, honorable members, we have received this uh, invitation from the Portfolio Committee on Higher Education, Science and Innovation. So members are invited to be part of the uh, Zoom meeting that will take place on Friday, 3rd of June, 2022. Two, whereby the agenda which they are inviting the committees for is uh, is to is to receive a presentation by the Department of Science and Innovation on the science, technology, and innovation white paper, mm -hmm. and recently cabinet approved a capital plan, and then financial resources for science and innovation an STI budget coordination mechanism. So now the main objective of inviting all these committees, uh, it's they've been looking at the sense that they can be look at the opportunities that should can be there for, in our case, for small businesses, what opportunities can be there and then the portfolio committee can then advise the Department of Small Business of the opportunities that can emanate from these uh, technologies that are being uh, innovated by the Department of uh, Higher Education, Science and Innovation. So this is just an invitation. So if members have got time or are available, they can indicate whether they can be able to participate on Friday from nine from nine up until one.